almost in the January transfer window, and you know what that means. Signings could happen in today's episode. We've got about 88 million to spend, which is crazy. And you guys know I'm looking to maybe improve my center back position, replacing John Stones, or potentially getting a new strike and replacing Kane because of his injury and everything. So there are options. Nothing is decided as we progress through, we'll decide. But yeah, in this episode, there could be a new player joining Everton. And also, we're going to figure out what happens in our Champions League group. There's a chance we could top the group, but it depends on whether Inter will drop points in their final group stage game or not. Now, if you are enjoying this Everton career mode, drop a like, subscribe, and let's get into a press conference. First question, when Kane was recovering from injury, instead of forcing Kane to play, you should have tried a false nine with Dybala. Change formation when you're lacking in a position. It's a good idea, of course, now the injury problems have subsided, so it's not useful anymore, but I'll tell you why I didn't want to do that. The simple answer is this man, Iñaki Williams, is unbelievable. I genuinely find him more effective than Harry Kane these days. This guy scores goals for fun. He's our second top scorer of the season with eight goals, a lot of them coming off the bench. He's the ultimate super sub. So when Kane got injured, I knew that very moment Iñaki Williams was going to be the man to replace him. So that's why I didn't want to change formation. I trusted in Iñaki Williams. Otherwise, what was the point of signing a backup striker? Next up, you should sign Tomori or Lisandro Martinez as they're doing good in real life and can fit in your team. I like one of them suggestions and that is Lisandro Martinez. I really think he could be the perfect centre-back for Everton. 85 overall is a bit low but if you look at his stats overall it's not the pace that is exciting it's everything else you look at how balanced the stats are he's going to be so agile to use he's five foot ten which is a bit of an L but how often do we concede headers on this game anyway so I really like the idea of potentially maybe doing a swap deal John Stones for Lisandro Martinez that could be something incredible maybe not John Stones then maybe someone else but I like the idea of that because I really think although John Stones had a good last episode I really really think Konsa needs a bit of help and maybe getting a left-footed centre-back could be smart. You know, we can have Konsa on the right playing in a more preferred position. We'll see. Nothing's decided. Once we get nearer to the window, we'll decide. But Lisandro Martinez is on my shortlist. Apparently, in real life, he's linked with the move to Manchester United. Next up, check everybody's contract because you don't want players like Konsa and others to leave because of expiring contracts. Yup, last episode, I didn't even know Konsa's contract was expiring. I'm so glad we renewed it. But you are right. There are a fair few players whose contracts are expiring now and we need to renew them. For example, Mason Holgate, I do want to give him a new deal and he's not willing to sign an extension. We'll have to manually negotiate and get him on another year's contract. All right, so squad roll, sporadic, that's fine. The important matter is we get him on an extension. One year extension, boom, Mason Holgate accepts it. We'll give him about 60,000 for renewing. There you go. He's, he's a really reliable backup center back to have. No issues whatsoever. He's renewed his contract for another season. Will Anthony Gordon just directly sign a renewal. There you go. That makes it easy for another couple of years. Now, aren't there a few players unhappy with their contracts? Parqueta is. Maybe we renew his contract for now. Livramento as well. Parqueta, I think, has a long-term deal, so we can leave it for now. But Livramento, his contract will start expiring soon. I think he deserves a new contract because he's still earning pennies. He's like 86 rated, man. we got to give him a better deal. All right, here we go. Important squad role for Livramento. He's earning 43,500 and his overall is, is like 86. He deserves more money for sure. No release clause on it. A big upgrade in his contract. Almost doubling his wages. A hefty signing bonus. He wants 90000 per week. And there you go. We've renewed another contract. Livramento signs with us for another couple of years. Meanwhile, played of the episode in the absence of Harry Kane. Iñaki Williams shines. Scored a ton of goals. And for me, he's your player of the episode. We've now got a game against Newcastle. And look at the stamina on our players. We're going to have to rotate the squad massively for this one. Look at that. Godfrey is going to play this game. We're going to have, of course, Mason Holgate with that new contract. Mikolenko still want to keep Livermento in the team. So let's sim this game against Newcastle. Can we win this in the Prem? We can. Let's go. Honestly, guys, this season we've been so freaking comfortable in the Premier League. Invincible after 14 games. But that could change because we've got a trip to Old Trafford. All right, boys, for this one, I have now a dilemma. Do I start Harry Kane, who's a bit low on stamina? Or do I trust in Iñaki Williams, who's in the form of his life? I think I'm going to trust in Iñaki Williams because with the 
plus five. He's 87 rated. He's scoring goals for fun. We'll bring on Kane off the bench if needed. That's going to be the team we rock for this one. Why is Van der Beek starting? Is, is Vitinha still injured? Vitinha is still hurt. He'll take a few more weeks to recover. That's fine. That's my team against Manchester United. They're playing Sancho at striker. They've got Nkunku. They've got Maguire. Gaia. I, I don't get what they're doing with their lineup. Let's just get into it. All right, boys. Here we go. Manchester United versus Everton. A very different dynamic to this game compared to last season. I remember Man United just about tipped us to the Premier League last season. This time we're the alpha and we're going for the title and we're in the better position. And that's why I really want to beat them in this game as we try and find Inyaki Williams. Controls it. Doesn't get allowed to take the shot off. That was debatable. Could have been a pen as well. Let's take advantage of it. Vinicius going for goal from distance. It's the upper side of the net. I know he's got the ability to pull those off. So, got to try it sometimes. And Kunku looking for Sancho. That's a good ball. We've got to get it away, boys. Vinicius does well. Come on. Good defending. And that could start something for us. As here goes Paqueta. Bit of support is needed. Dybala is in acres of space. What a ball for Paolo. First time. And he's managed to score. That was brilliant. Paqueta deserves so much credit for that part. And Dybala on his weaker right foot converts that. And look at him celebrate in front of the Old Trafford faithful. Unbelievable finish. Guys, just look at that for a ball from Paqueta. It was beautiful. And the finish as well from Dybala. Picked his spot. Bang. Like, look at this angle. Like, it was on the volley as well. Unreal. Yo, Dybala has been the main man this season, you know. Top scorer so far with 13 goals for the season. Like, he is having fun this season. Oh, good stuff from Consa. Crucial challenge made there. As we now attack with Vinicius Jr. I look to slide this one for Inyaki Williams. And that's the pace of Inyaki Williams. That could help us score. He's put it wide. His two-star weak foot sometimes lets him down in these instances. Oh, Inyaki Williams has made a really good run. I'm going to go for a driven shot. And that was rooted to the ground. What a finish. That's what I'm talking about, Inyaki Williams, man. This guy is different gravy. He's kind of convinced me that the fast pacey striker is just way too good on FIFA 22. I loved using Kane, but he ain't got the juice like Inyaki Williams, honestly. We are either going to bring on Harry Kane now just to ease him back into football because of his injury and everything. So Kane comes on for Inyaki Williams and I think we'll get a good idea of why Kane is better or Williams is better. Where well, there's Elanga. Why did I slide like that? That's a chance for Ronaldo who's now off the bench playing. Ben Arce going for goal. Consa with a very big block there. The chance might still be on for them. Jao Cancelo does well, earns a free kick. Come on now. But yeah, this season, I'd... oh, it's a, it's a red card for Guedes. Yep, this game's over against Manchester. No, they're completely done for. That was a red card. I had no idea. Here we go with Paolo Dybala. That ball roll was nice, but he gets taken out inside the box. Kind of looked like a, you know, dive to me as I was looking for that penalty. But yeah, I think Dybala earned it. I want to give this to Dybala, you know, because he's earned it. He scored already in this game. Let's get another goal with him. There you go. Easy penalty from Paolo Dybala. It's cleaning up against Manchester United. They're done for. And this is a statement. At Old Trafford, we've dismantled them. In the Premier League, we're cruising this season, as we should. Our team is that insane. So I'm just going to jump to result. This game's done. They're a man down. And that's how it finishes. By the way, Vitinha is back from his injury, so that's awesome. He'll take a few weeks to get into, you know, the full shape and everything. Okay, so next up, we've got an interesting game. Before I was going to play this Champions League game against Copenhagen, then I realized we've already guaranteed ourselves second spot because no matter what happens in this game, Benfica have a worse head-to-head -head record than us. So we're going to go through to the next round of the Champions League regardless. Uh, it all depends on the Inter game. So I am going to sim this game with my second team and let's just see what happens. A lot of players being rested for this one, but we're still a lot better than Copenhagen. What happens here? It's a one-all draw. So we, I guess, are going to get that second spot in the group. Well, at least this season, guys, we got to play the Champions League group stages. We finished second in the group. I want to actually see where everybody else finished. So in Group A, Madrid, Bayern, we could end up facing Madrid in the round of 16 or Barcelona or Wolfsburg. I wouldn't mind that if I'm being real. It could be Manchester United. No, it can't be them because I think same nationalities. You can't end up facing each other. So that's good. Lazio could be an opponent. Real Sociedad as well. Or Borussia Dortmund. I don't mind that. As long as we can avoid Barca, Bayern. Not Bayern. Barca and Real Madrid, basically. We should be good to go. Next up, we're smashing a couple of games in the Premier League. First ones against Leeds United. And we pick up a 3-0 win. Harry Kane getting back into business, boys. Scores a brace. Next up, it's Burnley. This should also be a routine 
Keen victory for us. Vitinha is back in the lineup. And look at that, Kane. He's woken up. He scored a brace in his last two games. And another game we're going to smash through in the Premier League is against West Ham. And this is also a win. Look at that, boys. We're cruising in this Premier League title race. In other news, boys, I completely forgot to mention this. But Paolo Dybala has a chance to win the Ballon d'Or this year, which will be so fitting. I don't remember in any of my career modes a player winning the Ballon d'Or. Dybala has been nominated along with Mbappe, Neymar, and Haaland. Oh, come on. It's killing Mbappe who ends up winning it. I mean, he's 94 ready to get it, but uh, to be fair, PSG did win the Champions League against us last season, so fair enough. I thought for a moment Dybala could win it. Can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm taking the Carabao Cup seriously because I, I want to win every trophy possible this season. This could be the final season, and I want to win it all, so let's take this seriously. And that's why I'm going to start a lot of my first team players for this one. Vitini can still get rested. We'll play Dele Alli. We'll play Iñaki Williams. We'll play Godfrey. Mikolenko as well. So I think that's a good lineup. Let's use that for this one against Arsenal. Huh, Moise Keane up against us once again. I feel like I just can't get him away from us, man, honestly. Never thought I'd be taking the mighty Carabao Cup seriously, but here we are. Oh, that's a good ball inside. Leroy Sane and we concede first. I swear in cup competitions, my record is trash. I feel like every time I play like a quarterfinal or a semi-finals, I end up taking the L. Hopefully not this time, man, but we've not started off well. Oh, they've broken through again and Pickford can't stop it. They've scored another one. This is a disaster. We're 2-0 down to Arsenal. Oh, that's a real nice pass for Vinicius Jr. He looks inside for Paqueta. Sees Iñaki Williams. Oh, that might go in. That might go in. We get super lucky with that goal. Is that an own goal or something? Regardless, we're back in the game. I really don't know what happened here. Vinicius with the pass inside. Paqueta finds Iñaki. That was the most weirdest shot I've ever seen. Who is the goal going to be given to? That's, it's it's an own goal. It was an Arsenal player who put it in. Oh, here we go. Paolo Dybala being sent through. This is looking nice. Dybala, I'm going to go for a finesse shot. Tough angle. Off the crossbar. No. I thought that was going to be it. Dybala. So close to being a screamer. As good as Iñaki Williams is, I feel like against Arsenal, there's only one man who would want to score. And that's Kane, so we're bringing him on. Oh, my God. Moise Keane. What a chance for him it is. Cut back. Godfrey has just saved us there. Godfrey has saved us. Sees Dybala making a great run. This is a chance. This nope. is a proper chance. But why not use your left foot, Dybala? That would have been a guaranteed goal. Dybala again getting taken out. But this time Paqueta controls it. Strikes it. We still have it. We still have it. Vinicius controls it well. Looking for that ball. Dybala on the volley. And it's off the post again. I refuse to believe our luck. Livramento now driving it forward. I'm going to release it for Dybala. And here we go. Paolo Dybala. What can he do? Brings it inside. Looks for Kane. What a big chance it was. But Vinicius can't score as well. What is happening here? How on earth are we out of this tie? Unbelievable. The ref's going to blow the whistle. How did Kane not score there? How did Vinicius not score there? We're out of the Carabao Cup. And I can't believe this. Guys, I don't really believe in juju or, or curses, but Harry Kane. Honestly, the amount of finals and the amount of times we've been knocked out of cups, close losses, I feel like he's bringing the bad juju with us, man. Honestly. Like, yeah, we're, we're not winning trophies because of him. Anyways, we've got one last game before we'll be in the January trans window, and it's against Spurs, and let's get this one underway. I'm going to start Kane because he's playing against his former club, but I'm going to give Paqueta a bit of a rest and play. Van der Beek, and also I think Gray deserves a bit of game time, so Vinicius is going to get a bit of a rest. That's our team. We need to win this. Here's Vitinha, and look at the open space there is for him. He goes for it. Onana with a big save. Spurs defense so deep. Vitinha, finesse shot. Vitinha, oh my days. Against that five at the back, Spurs defense. We needed something special. He's back from his injury, and he's announced himself that, yo, he never left. What a goal from Vitinha. 1-0 up. Have a look at that for a finish as well, man. Two midfielders linking up. That was brilliant from Vitinha. Oh, there we go with Paolo Dybala early on in this second half. Looking to create something for himself. Strikes it. Straight at Onana, though. Harry Kane. Oh, just so slow and lackluster. Honestly, ever since that broken toe injury that he got, Kane has not been the same on the pitch. Now it's still us. Vitinha, finesse shot. What? That was the worst finesse shot I think I've ever seen. Guys, I'm not going to lie. It's just not been Kane's night. I need a bit of Iñaki Williams and maybe even Vinicius Jr. on the pitch. Oh, Goretzka's got space here. John Stones with a big block. Another chance for them. And Spurs get the equalizer. 
You know what? It was coming. They were the better side. Oh, it's Hyungman Son running at us like that. I am genuinely terrified. He goes backwards for Regular, and Konza stops them in his tracks. And now we've got space on the breakaway for a counter-attack. Paolo Dybala running with everything he's got, trying to bring it inside, but Guardiol too strong. This Spurs team is good. One last chance. Livramento looking inside. It's Iñaki Williams. Ah, oh, the ball was lacking a bit of pace, and that's going to be full time. Referee, there it is. We've dropped points against Spurs. To be honest, though, we're still nine points clear in the Premier League and unbeaten halfway through the season. We could go invincible. And with that, the trans window opens and Lucas Digne has been sold. We've got 111 million to spend. And I'm thinking maybe replacing Kane is an option. Maybe replacing Stones. Let me know what you think. But in the next episode, we're going to make that decision. In this January trans window, we need to finalize our squad because this is the season I want to win everything so yeah drop a like subscribe i'll catch you all for the next episode peace